G'day everyone and welcome back to yet another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're doing just the tips for round six. Obviously, Gather Round just finished up. Great round of footy. Uh, I got six correct tips, which I'm happy with. Quite a few people actually got a perfect nine this round, but still six. I'm on an upward trajectory. Um, it's getting a little bit easier to tip now that we're starting to learn the trajectories of various sides in the comp. It's obviously still tricky, still upsets every week, but I'll take six out of nine. It's not bad. We've got another juicy round of fixtures coming up this week. We have the actual grand final uh, rematch between Geelong and Sydney. We have Carlton and St Kilda, a couple of uh, sides that are massively improved on last year going head-to-head. -head. Both had pretty good starts to the year, and we've got a massive Anzac Day clash as well. How about those Dons, eh? For my thoughts on round five of the AFL season, guys, make sure you check out the round review that I did a couple of videos ago. Of course, we've also got Jeruzzi's nine things I learned each week coming out on the channel. I do apologize that he got a bit drunk for it, but geez, it was fun to edit that video. Like I do every week, guys, I'm going to give a shout out to the weekly winners on the True Footy competition. Sorry uh, that I forgot to do it last week, or at least I uh, couldn't last week actually because I was about to fly and I hadn't seen the Easter Monday game, but this week we're back on track and I'm currently sitting on 380th. Uh, after two good weeks in a row, I think I got seven last week, six this week. That puts me up to 26 correct tips. The round five winner was someone called Drapes for Brownlow, uh, who had nine correct tips, perfect. And uh, funnily enough, the margin uh, was 41, which showed that even the person who got all their tips right didn't see Adelaide beating Carlton by 56 points coming. The overall leader is someone called P-Man65. I think that's three weeks in a row, so congratulations, P-Man. You've got 35 correct tips. And the winner, or the leader, rather, of the fantasy competition is someone called Daniel W with a total average of 21.25. So well done to all you lot. I'm sure you're aware by now, guys, that we do have our game day squad competition going as well, which I do a uh, dedicated video for every week. But if you want to join in the action, make sure you click the link in the description. Completely free to play. It's just like fantasy, but it's got a fun, interesting twist as well. So join the competition and look out for the weekly video that I do each week. So without further ado, let's get into this week's footy tipping. And I think this is the first week where we actually kick off the round on a Friday night and it'll be Fremantle against the Western Bulldogs, a rematch of last year's elimination final where the dogs got out to like 41 points in front. Fremantle came back in front of a home crowd to win that final. Both sides are interestingly going into this game on two wins and three losses. I do think though comparatively the Bulldogs have looked a little bit slicker um, not perfect by any stretch certainly not as good as their potential is but with their win over Richmond in particular a very gutsy win they fell short last week against Port Adelaide but on the stretch I'm a little bit more convinced slightly by the Western Bulldogs although they certainly have some issues of their own Fremantle are coming off a 16 point win against the Gold Coast Suns they kind of left their run late second half was much better than the first half and uh, it was a 16 point victory but I'm sure their fans are still wanting to see a little bit more considering how good they were last year this is a great test for them against another side that's 2-3 and three at home I don't know what the weather forecast is but I've actually got a feeling here that the Bulldogs will win. I did say that last week, and I felt confident that the Bulldogs would beat Port Adelaide, but I think Fremantle is a much less imposing opponent right now on current form than Port Adelaide are. It'll be interesting to see how the Dogs recover from wet conditions and then having to travel twice in a week, and obviously a six-day break as well. I'm starting to talk myself out of it, but I do think the Dogs are a stronger side right as it is now. So I'm going to tip the Bulldogs to win this game by 18 points. Then we've got a juicy clash between Port Adelaide and West Coast uh, at Adelaide Oval as well. Now, this is a game that I am... Um, it's, it's hard to get excited for Eagles games at the moment. I still do. I still very much do. But with the injury situation, um, and I know that we're kind of carrying on like a broken record when we talk about West Coast and their injuries, but... If anything, it's actually more shocking than last year. I think we've got potentially 18 players unavailable going into this game. I think we have a list of 43 or 44. So as it currently stands, uh, unless we get a few players back and there's a few players listed as tests, the West Coast will be struggling to fill an emergency list as well. So that's 26 players. But that's my excuse out of the way. Thank God I got that out. Now look, Port Adelaide is uh, is a fairly solid side at the moment when you consider the first five rounds of their season were pretty tough. I mentioned this in my other video, but they uh, sort of capped it off with two really good wins in a row. They've beaten Sydney in Sydney. They've beaten the Dogs at home in tough conditions, came from behind, gutsy win. I'm starting to think they might have got their shit together after a pretty average round two and three. So I don't know how much I need to really analyze about this game. Does anyone give West Coast a chance? 
Well, West Coast have shown flashes through games where they've actually been really good and matched up with some really good teams in Melbourne and Geelong. So I'm just hopeful we see that again, even if it's not for four quarters. I think that we have the ability to keep this to five or six goals, but on balance, with that much adversity, and Port Adelaide are a better side, Port Adelaide should win this game by 39 points. I'm just plucking that number out of nowhere. Then we've got GWS taking on the mighty Brisbane Lions at Monica Oval. The Giants came off a spirited win against Hawthorne. Obviously, Hawthorne are a little bit of a mixed bagger. I mean, we do expect them to go probably bottom two at this point of the season, but even still, their best footy is challenging to some of the better teams. And for GWS... I think even though we consider them probably a bottom four side, some of their best footy as well, they certainly don't look like a bottom four side when you compare it to last year. You know, the last year's bottom four was a lot weaker. So they've got a bit about them. So this game isn't um, like a, a smashing waiting to happen by any stretch. That being said, the Lions just did dispose of a far stronger side in North Melbourne, or at least in my opinion. I think North Melbourne have played some pretty reasonable fo- football this year, and the Lions blew them off the park by 75 points. I'm more inclined to think that was just a really good Brisbane performance than reading too much into anything else will they bring that intensity again possibly and if they do they'll wipe the floor with the Giants but I think we're all pretty comfortable in saying the Lions should win this game at Monica I'll say by 35 points Next, we have the Cats versus the Sydney Swans. This is an interesting one. The Cats had, obviously, a shaky start to the year. Started 0-3, looked unconvincing, lost to Gold Coast, and then backed it up with two pretty heavy wins over two sides. We probably expect to finish 17th and 18th, respectively, in Hawthorne or West Coast. So while we don't take too much out of those results for what they are, the fact that they belted both of those sides makes me just think they might have gotten a little bit of confidence back, a little bit of touch. And, um, you know, I think that was, was lacking with Geelong was touch and form and confidence rather than anything more severe with game plan or anything like that, and certainly not ability. So this would be a relatively strong Geelong side coming up against Sydney, who looked a bit pissed to lose that game to Port Adelaide. Thought they'd won it, obviously, and then uh, came out and put Richmond to the sword, although Richmond kind of have their own issues at the moment. This is a tough one because the best version of Geelong will come out and beach at Sydney here. But I think I have a little bit more faith in Sydney right now. So this is a tough one. Um, By by no means do I think I'm picking the favourite here. In fact, I think most people on ESPN are tipping Geelong. But I've tipped Sydney here. Any result is possible. Geelong could come out and make a statement and win this game by 40 points. In which case, they're back on the radar. But I think Sydney win this game. I'll go the Swans by 12 points. Next, we go back to Tassie for Hawthorne versus the Adelaide Crows. Hawthorne, as I mentioned before, got really close to claiming the chocolates against the Giants uh, last week down in Adelaide. Now, it was a dramatic game, very even game, to be honest, Um, and Hawthorne played some reasonable footy. Obviously, they've been a mixed bag this year. In the second half against Geelong, they got absolutely annihilated and came out and looked to right the wrongs a little bit of that second half performance. Admittedly, it was obviously Geelong, who were a very strong team, but Hawthorne have this ability to switch it on. And they're coming up against a side in the Crows who now look like every bit a finals uh, quality side. Obviously, it's only early, and people are making the points in the comments that They haven't won outside of South Australia yet, and that's probably valid, but they've also only played two games outside of South Australia. In fact, I just checked. I think they've been in South Australia since round one. So they've played four games in South Australia, so the criticism that they've lost all their games away from home is not a really strong one right now. The forward line's firing. The stars are in good form. Jordan Dawson in the form of his life. There's every reason to tip Adelaide here. But I'm going to tip an upset. This is ridiculous. And I think it's very clear this does not come from a point of disrespect to Adelaide. If I didn't rate Adelaide as a finals contender, I wouldn't have made the video that I did uh, last Friday or whatever it was. I've, again, lost the time zones here. But I'm expecting a random Sam Mitchell Hawthorne win here. Don't, don't ask me why. I probably should tell you why. I should justify it on this channel. But there's upsets every week. And this week for me, Hawthorne beating Adelaide in Tassie will be the shock of the round. Next, we've got Carlton and the Saints at Marble Stadium. Uh, a battle between two sides that uh, probably weren't really fancy to do much this year. I actually tipped the Blues for top four. We'll see how that goes. Obviously, both sides undefeated uh, up until this round, actually. Carlton getting their asses handed to them by a very slick Adelaide side. Kicked eight goals in the opening quarter to basically end the contest right there and then. I'm not reading too much into that result from a, from a Carlton perspective. It was a bad performance, but they'll probably do one. It's been five weeks. It was the first game where they've lost. Played some reasonable football, still a finals contender, uh, but St Kilda, on the other hand, have looked a little less shaky across the five performances. Yes, against Collingwood was probably their first big test this year, 
But they've played some pretty good football. The defense looks really, really sound. Some players playing some really good footy. I think they've got a good spread of decent players in their prime, supported by some really good young kids at the moment. And they're well coached, I believe. So I have confidence now in St. Kilda's program. They could fall off in the second half of the year like last year. I, I don't know. But for the purposes of this tip right now, I think St. Kilda have given us a little bit more confidence to know that they will show up to this game. And so I think this will be a good game, but St. Kilda win this one by 10 points. Then we have the Gold Coast Suns and North Melbourne doing battle at a place called Heritage Bank Stadium, which I have no idea where that is. I'm going to assume it's like Cairns, potentially, that's been renamed. You guys in the comments are great at picking up all those little errors I make. I do appreciate it, actually. But the Gold Coast Suns coming off that loss to Fremantle, uh, relatively okay performance, but maybe that's just because our expectations of Gold Coast have dropped so low. Uh, they've pretty much just had the one good win this year against the Cats. So for North Melbourne, this is an opportunity to demonstrate that they have genuinely grown as a side this year. They've played some good footy in the uh, first like month of the season. Disappointing against the Brisbane Lions. Against the Gold Coast Suns, they really, really should have no issue. But the Suns are certainly not going to get walked over, in my opinion. I just think there's a little bit more top-end talent at North. His system looks a little bit better. The Gold Coast Suns were found wanting against Fremantle, particularly in that second half. I think North should win this game, but this one is genuinely 50-50. While I think North are better... Gold Coast do have definitely some capacity to come out and win this game in the same way they beat Geelong. And they've got they've got talent. I think they're underperforming a little bit. So I'm going to tip North Melbourne, but this one I could change last minute. I'm iffy on it, but I'll say the ruse just because I think they're a better side and have been a better side this season. But if the Suns are serious about improving this year and there really has to be some pressure for them to move up the ladder, then a home game against North Melbourne, a side that's likely to miss the top eight, this should be the sort of game they're winning. That being said, the ruse win. I think. 10 points. Then we have the Anzac Day Eve game between Melbourne and Richmond on uh, Monday, I think it is. No, sorry, it's Tuesday. Again, I'm 12 hours behind you guys, so the time zones are throwing me every time. Melbourne just got dumped by a very impressive Essendon side who finally came a big scalp. We'll talk about Essendon a little bit later, but while they lost... And it was a bit of a surprise. I think the top end we've seen from Melbourne this year still makes me confident they're a genuine contender. So I have genuine faith that uh, they're going to have the ability to show up to this big occasion. Richmond, similarly, I do think are a side that is likely to show up to a big occasion here. So I think we could get a pretty ripping game. I think Richmond's underperformed this year, though, having six points from five games so far, losing somewhat narrowly to some good sides in Collingwood. Uh, the Bulldogs put on a pretty good performance and beat them. And then they were... A little bit off the pace against Sydney, let's be honest. Three consecutive losses. This is a very, very important game for Richmond. And if they lose this game, it will kind of take them out of the touch with the top eight, at least for the short term. Do I think they will beat Melbourne? No, to be honest. I don't think they're good enough to beat Melbourne. I think if Melbourne have a really off day, then they're certainly good enough to make them pay for some mistakes on the field. So an upset's possible here. But if we're assessing these two sides on quality and demonstrated quality this year, then the easy answer is Melbourne. So I'm going to say Melbourne put them to the sword by 37 points. Then we finally got a huge Anzac Day clash when you consider these sides a second and third on the ladder. Of course, I'm talking about Collingwood versus the Essendon Footy Club, and I think this game genuinely is on Monday. Collingwood had a big test last week coming up against a young uh, well, relatively young, up-and-coming side, definitely, in St Kilda, getting the job done by six points. St Kilda came home late. Collingwood were good enough overall to, to win the game. They haven't really put a foot wrong this year. Obviously, they, they had that game against uh, the Lions at the Gabba where the Lions turned it on, and the Lions have had that ability to just turn onto a uh, top-tier premiership contender-level ability, and I think that's what happened at the Gabba. So Collingwood, for the most part, this season has gone to plan. Essendon have exceeded expectations in the first four rounds. I think they won three. They lost to St Kilda, who are in good form themselves. We had, we weren't really sure about how to assess them. Then they come out and beat the Demons in very impressive fashion, and where they're leading the game by as much as 42 points. So you have to give them credit for that, and that's why this is a really juicy clash. I think you'd be silly to say there's no upset potential here. Essendon, absolutely, if they can beat Melbourne like they did, can catch Collingwood if they're not at their absolute prime. And the beautiful thing about the Anzac Day clash is it will probably bring both of these sides to their absolute best, which is why I'm a little bit more confident in Collingwood in this game. But anything could happen. I'm going to say Collingwood win this game by 19 points, but how good would it be to see Essendon win? 
Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. Those are my round six tips. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. If you could also do me a favor and check out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. If you are like me and needing to manscape, it has been a little while. I'm on holiday mode, but really, I need to get my shit together. You can get the Lawnmower 4.0, the best body hair trimmer on the market, at least in my opinion, that I've used. I use the product all the time. You can get all those uh, sort of accessories and liquid formulations to help round out your routine. Just go to the website, have a little browse about what might suit you, and and use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout and you get 20% off and free shipping. Hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.